School Champions 1 and 2 are taking place in this room, in that room, up there. You'll see people sitting there. And you'll need a book, so you'll have to go to the bookstore and buy those books. So hello, everybody. Hey, you know what? Good news. It didn't snow here. Woohoo! <laughs> Last night I was, um, Stevens, he's in Brazil right now enjoying the heat. And so last night I was like, oh, Jesus. I even parked my car up further so that the snow knew where to land so it could make it easier. I had it all planned. But I was so thankful this morning because I was thinking, oh, it's going to be bad tonight. You know, you hear numbers, isn't it? I heard like 34 centimeters. I heard 15 centimeters, 5 centimeters. No, no centimeters but rain. But apparently north of the city is not so good. So bless them and I pray for them. I know that they're probably really happy because tomorrow will be a great ski day. So see, this, there's, it all turns out for good, right? But in the city here. But how about we stand up? It was interesting. We were, I was just sharing a bit of a story. Um, just welcome to those on the internet right now too. My name is Sandra Long. And we're just excited to have a Come Holy Spirit meeting tonight and just to see what the Holy Spirit's going to do. We want to worship. And so I just want to encourage you to move forward even right now. I want to encourage you to, you know, come to the front. I always find that easier. You know, it just helps me to focus. But I was just sharing with the group in the um, House of Prayer. How many people heard on the news about the house that collapsed? That was actually was right, that was kind of interesting. It was on, I can't remember what morning, but it was right by our house. And um, we heard a lot of sirens going. And I remember thinking, like uh, my son and his wife, we, we looked at each other and I thought, wonder, that's really close. I wonder what that is. And when you, I, I didn't hear a whole lot on the news, but on the news it said that the, they were digging out the um, foundation of the house, I guess probably to make it the ceiling higher or whatever, and it just collapsed. And I thought that was, I was just thinking, it just reminded me of how important it is to have your foundation strong. That if the foundations are weak, then, you know, anything can happen. Even though in the natural, you've got this beautiful house and it was on a really nice street and the house was beautiful, but it just like, it didn't have the columns, I guess, to um, support it. And one of the things that as followers of Jesus is that it's important for us to have our foundations, the Word of God, um, prayer, and even worship. Those things that have to be foundational in a season where if things collapse, we'll know that we're, you know, we can still stand in the midst of it. And I think the encouraging part about it is the owner said in the news, oh, I'm just going to rebuild. So wasn't that good, hey? I thought that was good. So Holy Spirit, how about you say hi to somebody first? Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your presence. Father, we thank you for an incredible opportunity tonight, Father, to worship you and honor you and praise you and glorify you. Father, I'm asking that tonight, Lord, I'm so thankful, first of all, Lord, that we didn't have to, to shovel snow today, Lord. I give you all the glory and all the honor. But Father, I'm so thankful that tonight that we get to come and, and just be in your presence, Father. And Father, I just, I acknowledge you and everything that will happen tonight. Father, I pray that, that, the, that you, you would send ministering angels and warring angels in this place, Father, that would come and just do whatever they need to do, the things that you send them to do tonight. Father, I pray that you would open our hearts, Father, to receive all that you have. And Father, we just want to worship you with everything that we are, so we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. So come on forward, everybody.
Strength will rise, we wait on the Lord, we will wait on the Lord, we will wait on the Lord. So strength will rise, we wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, we will wait on the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong
lift us up on wings like
de mí
If you're comfortable, um, I feel like we just need to come and lay on the floor here. So if you're sitting in your chair and you just need to be swept away in the presence of God, there's lots of space up here for you to come and just lay down. And we're just going to worship more. You know, we might do some other things in between, but I just feel like it's one of those nights where, hey, we just, you know, and if you're at home and you're watching on the Internet, I just want to encourage you to just lie out on your carpet or your couch right now and we're just going to continue to worship but I just really feel like he just wants us to be positioned and really um, and if you're not used to lying on the floor in church we do it here <laughs> it's called soaking <laughs> now this is not to fall asleep but this is you know God's agenda so be at peace and we're just going to worship more and so yeah there's lots of space here just come and and if you don't if there's not enough room up here then there's the aisles there's over at the side
Lord is just blowing over you right now. And he's just blowing life into you right now. Life into those places inside of you that have been sleeping. Life in those places where it's been hurting or even appears that things have been dying. The Holy Spirit is just coming and he's just, he's reminding you that he's alive. Jesus is alive in you right now. Jesus, will you come and just wake up your kids right now, Father. Wake them up, Father. Father, would you take them to that place with you? Father, we thank you that your your worship is, is to worship you is incredible. But Lord, we thank you for the, the incredible presence of God that is in this room right now. Even those that are watching on the internet, internet right now. Father, I'm asking that you would just come and blow into their room right now, Father. Holy Spirit, would you release your life into them right now? Father, I thank you that even in a place where we are right now, and I know that some of you are standing there, and I just feel like there's weightiness on you, like there's a scale, and you don't know how to balance yourself, and the Lord is just saying, I'm coming to give you balance. And there's some of you that are standing there, and I feel like there's there's people that even right now, you know, that are saying, Sandra, but you don't even know that right now there's a, a lack in my life, and whether it's a job or finances and I feel like the Lord is saying okay I'll come and take care of that too so Father whatever it is right now and I feel like he's just saying you know it's interesting I was just talking one of our pastors they just had a baby girl a couple days ago and in the midst of it it was really interesting they had a Christian nurse and, and I pray that I can say this but I thought it was good but you know when you're in labor and you're in you know frustration sometimes it's hard but the nurse just said I know your pastor so let God be God you know when I feel like God's just saying right now he's saying let tell them let me be them let me be big in their lives right now and so father I'm asking no matter what is happening that you would just come and be big in their lives right now father I'm asking that you would just come and take the weight off of them right now father we serve a living God Father, you are living right now. We welcome you into those places right now. Just welcome into your life, wherever it is, wherever there's lack, wherever there's pain, whatever it is in your life, if, if it's relationship issues, whatever it is, welcome him in right now. Father, we just say we can't live without you. We don't want to We don't want to close the door in any part of our life, Father, um, and just say, well, I can deal with that. Lord, we can't. So, Father, just come and just let your presence just come and just flow in this room in an incredible way, Father. Lord, would you release your light and your life and your fire on your kids right now? Father, would you come in an incredible way, even the ones watching on the internet right now? Would you come into their homes right now? Father, I just thank you for what you're doing, Father. We glorify you. We honor you. We praise you, Father. You are the King of Kings. Father, we go to that high place with you right now. It says, roll over, roll over. <laughs> One fell off and bumped his head. I don't know why. I was just thinking that. I just had to say it. But maybe um, the Lord just wants us to be like kids tonight. <laughs> he wants us to jump on the bed. Jump on the bed. Just be free and, and, and you're in a place right now with him. So jump on the bed. How many people were told, don't jump on the bed? Yeah. Remember when two double beds and you jump from one to the other but you could never jump on the beds at home <laughs> whoa chica wonderful wow let me just read this scripture
scripture. We were reading it in um, in the back room before we we came out. to help in times of trouble so so we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea let the oceans roar and foam let the mountains tremble at the water as the water surges a river brings joy to the city of our God the sacred home of the Most High God dwells in that city it cannot be destroyed from the very break of day God will protect it the nations are in and the earth melts. Wah! The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction among the earth. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still. <laughs> and know that I'm God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of Heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is your fortress. And so, Father, I'm asking right now that you would just come. And I know there's many right now that are... If, if that's you, if, if you feel like, you know, you just read that scripture and you needed it, stand up. And the ministry team's going to come and just pray over you. that are standing. Father, I'm just asking right now that you would just come. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are a refuge and our strength. Father, no matter what's happening around us, Lord, I thank you that you come and you just minister. Whoa. You just minister to these ones right now. Father, let the river of God just flow wherever they are right now. I thank you for the river of God in this place. I thank you that the river of God brings life. And so I just speak life into them right now. In the name of Jesus. Shikarara. Life, Lord. Life for these ones right now. Life. 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 Ooh. I feel like right now there's um, somebody um, with their kneecap. Is there somebody that needs healing for their knee? There's somebody on the, um, right on the, we'll pray for the camera girl. Yeah. Anybody else, just wave your hand if that's you. <laughs> I got the word elbow. Anybody with an elbow issue? Oh, there's a knee back there. Do you want to just put your hand up? Ministry, actually, you know what? If you see um, a hand right now, just stand up. There's a man right at the back. If a couple people could just go um, right be, um, at the back. Do you want to go? Oh. And pray. Just keep waving your hand. Knees. Father, I'm asking that you would just come. for diabetes right now. There's a man right back there. When, when somebody comes to you, just put your hand down so we know. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your healing, Father. 
I thank you for the power of the cross. I thank you for what you did, Jesus, on the cross, that you died on the cross for our sins and our sicknesses. And Father, we just, we bring to you knees and elbows and diabetes tonight, Father. And we thank you that the blood of Jesus comes and washes it all away, Father. And that you strengthen that right now. And I, I don't know if my, even my dad, I know we were talking about it today, and he needs a new kneecap. So, Father, I'm asking that you would just come and do that for him right now. Father, I know that in the natural, there's a waiting list. But, Lord, in your timing, Father, you can do it in an instant. So, Father, I pray that, that you would give him a new kneecap. Father, that he wouldn't have to have any surgery. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would take away the pain that comes with, with um, the, the knees. Strength. Thank you, Papa. saying to David in our I said David you want to do an offering talk and he says just tell them to give so how about I'm just going to tell you to give <laughs> you know it's always an honor to to be able to give an offering to the Lord and it's very biblical but you know I just find it such a joy to be able to give to him so if you would like to give tonight we're gonna we're gonna play a song and we can come forward but there are envelopes and front of your seats you can write it to catch the fire if you're writing a check or a credit card whatever um, if you're bringing offering but how we just do that right now just just come on forward even right now because we want to move we want to be able to pray for everybody tonight way. Father, that it has gone all over the world. It's gone to the nations. Father, it has supported a ministry and people and done so much. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that it is uh, with our privilege, Father, to be able to, to give tonight and, and, and just to honor you in the name of Jesus. Clap. They, they've been going, it's 10 to 9. And you can keep, who's got a great testimony? Who wants to thank the Lord for something that happened this week? Anybody? Okay, here, come on up. Oh, yes, this is an, an amazing testimony. You know, it, Stephen did that, was it last Friday? Yeah. Where, you know, it, um, I'm trying to remember what happened. But I, because I went to the washroom in between. <laughs> I think there was one person that, that came up, and I don't know if you're here tonight, that something had happened like seven years ago, and you never gave thanks because you were afraid to, and then you came up. Wasn't that great? So what happened this week? This was exciting. Today, my husband and I became citizens. Yeah. So we welcome you. So how long has that been? It's been a nine-year um, process, but we're finally Canadians. So I just want to praise and thank God. He's been with us through, 
you know, every year, every time we went through, you know, tough times, he's been there, you know, giving us hope, you know, and um, so we just want to praise him. Thank him. Thank him. That's good. How about we, okay, who was born in Canada? Come here, Sasha. Come here. We're going to pray for this couple. Actually, when, and I don't know if they're girls, if, they, if they're comfortable, but how about we have the ministry team? Were you, yeah, you were born in Canada. Yeah. So how about we have the, just welcoming this this family to Canada. It's wonderful. Does anybody else have a great, I know, it's very exciting, isn't it? You have a testimony, wonderful. Um, I just want to give glory to God. Um, this is a testimony of what has happened to my family. <clears throat> yeah, my family, and we have property back home, and we have property, and one man, a man came and they built a house and owned our property just by his own fault. He took the land. And then um, my family took him to court, and then after some time, the court this year he gave them back. And he told the court, he told to the guy, destroy the house you have built, retain the property, and leave the place. Wow. Yeah. And I praise the Lord for that. That's great. Yeah. That's good. How long has that been? Sometimes ago, maybe like five years, he occupied yeah. for five years, but this year he gave back. He destroyed uh, the. Not the court, God, God said, really, to destroy the house he has built, to return the property and to go, to leave the, the place. And you, you get back the land, praise the Lord for that. Yes. That's actually an answer, I mean, that's huge, isn't it? Because remember, prophetically, what God has been saying is that 2012 would be one of those, you know, breakthrough years. Okay, anybody else have a great testimony? I have a grandson. That's a great testimony. I'm just, you know, yeah, thank you, Jesus. He's the cutest. Anybody else? Do you have a, does anybody, want, anybody else want to thank the Lord? Do you want to thank the Lord? Come on. It's important. Well, it's just like we can all sit here and look for what to thank God for. Well, I have thousand, thousand reasons to thank God. Because if I'm here today, it's because God is good and His mercy endures forever. Yeah. Amen. Amen. One day we'll have to hear your story. Wonderful. Good. Yeah, they're doing the offering. But do you want to thank the Lord? How about, okay, so, sorry, she's giving an offering, but what do you want to thank the Lord for? Actually, I want to, today's a good day. I got uh, results for a biopsy. Oh, good. And um, it was all benign, so Yay. I'm just, just thrilled. So much to thank God for. He's awesome. That's good. That's good news, isn't it? Because you know that, that cancer stuff is terrible, isn't it? I just want to give you a little up, update. Um, some of you, we, I know we say it on Sunday morning, but some of you on Friday night, you know Bill and Mary Audrey Raycroft. So just continue to pray for Bill and Mary Audrey right now. They're, um, um, Bill's sort of um, bedridden now, and so we just want to pray that the Lord would, um, just his grace and mercy in that situation. We still pray, God, if you want to come and heal him, you know, come and heal him, but he's um, had a good life too, and, and so um, tomorrow, if we could just pray tonight, um, his daughter comes home from a week's vacation, he wanted her to go, and so we've just been praying that he stays alive till tomorrow, <laughs> and I know that sounds terrible, but it isn't, you know, in the sense of we want, she wants to say goodbye to her dad again, and so just pray that you would just strengthen Mary Audrey. She's had to, she had a few nights where she went home and slept, but now she's staying all the time. And so we just have to pray that, that God would strengthen her and just be with the family right now. So it's good. Good. Okay, well, I just thought quickly, I would, um, we, we were chatting tonight um, just in terms of what God wanted to do, and it was interesting, Joan had a, a picture of a lasso. We were kind of chuckling because we didn't know how to spell it, but I think we, we got it anyways. And when you think of a lasso, is you know when somebody take you know puts the rope out and brings you back in, and he, and and she felt it was like um, for refocusing. Um, and there was a, what was the other word? Refocusing and renewing your mind. And it was interesting because this past I would say month, and I don't know about you guys. But it's been quite the interesting month. Very interesting, isn't it? And, and I was just like getting exhausted. And 
I, I was thinking, God, what are you doing? You know, there's so much going on, and it wasn't just, you know, stuff in the world, but it just seemed like everybody was falling apart all at once. Do you ever have one of those months? <laughs> and if you're me, sometimes it's hard because I love everybody, and I, 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 I'm very um, sympathetic to whatever's, whatever's happening to people, and and I was like grinding my teeth, you know, and you know, if you go to the dentist, you know, you got to get one of those things. I thought, I'm not, I just don't want that anymore. You know, and it was interesting tonight when I, um, I showed uh, Joan when she was talking about the last lasso. Um, and I said, look, Joan, look at my sermon. I actually have to preach the sermon on Sunday night at, at the young adult campus. But it was in the scripture um, where it says, be still and know that I'm God. And it's a really unusual time in history just in terms of what God's doing because in the midst of what he's doing is we we really need to stand firm and we really to, need to be still and it's hard to be still isn't it if I know oftentimes I'm thinking God I've got to keep doing I've got to keep doing do you ever get like that what can I do what can I do and and notice the common thread there is I what well, you know what can I do you know and I know that the Lord you know can his word, you know, and that, that, this is the one thing that, that God has just been putting in my heart. He's saying, you know, read my word. Read my word. I tell you, read his word. It's really good. It's got some good stuff in there. And I, I've been finding personally that as I've been reading his word, it's been bringing me to a better place. The perspective about things, the, just the whole perspective is changing. Um, it was interesting. Today I, I had a phone call. I won't go into any details, but have you ever had one of those phone calls and, and you're, I was listening to the, the person that was chatting and I just began to cry because I was so devastated by what they had said and, and I wanted to go and, it, you know, I'm like a mama bear. I want to go and like smack that person around and, you know, how dare you, you hurt them and all this stuff, you know, and <laughs> that's what we do. I'm human. But don't we do that? Yeah. You know, you, and I wasn't being still. I, I was being affected. Um, my, my emotions and my body were reacting to the pain of the other person. And, and I, I got a headache. Did anybody ever get that? You know, all of a sudden, like, when stress comes and you get a headache and you're like, oh, I just don't like that. But in Psalm 46, again, at 10, it says, Be still and know that I'm God. And I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted above the earth. Now, I was reading it in the message, and I really liked it in the message. Um, and it said, step out of the traffic. <laughs> I thought that was good, right? Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. I can picture that. Have you? I went downtown Toronto yesterday. And I, I took a friend with me because I said, I can drive downtown as long as you tell me where to go. You know, because I have no concept of the, I shouldn't speak that, but I don't, I get confused with all the streets and which way they go. And, and I can just picture, if I, I thought after how easily it went because I had somebody with me to tell me, go this way, go this way, go this way. And we got downtown, we got a great parking spot, we left there and we, we got a little bit of traffic on the way home, but it was like really smooth. But it was smooth because I had somebody with me. And you know who the somebody is in our life is the Lord. And I've been finding lately that one of the things that God has been putting on my heart, he's been saying, Sandra, I really, really want you to listen to me. And so how many people, um, Stephen kind of gets annoyed at me sometimes, but lose their keys. Yeah. Or if you're a woman, how many people lose their purse? Yeah, yeah. Wallet? Any men? No. See, Stephen says, leave it in the same place. And if it got moved, it was probably me. <laughs> no, but it's true. Because, um, you know, it's true. It was funny the other day, I, I have to say, um, okay, let me finish this and then I'll tell you. But so I, I started saying, I don't like it when I, I lose my keys. And I hate it, you know, when I'm like, where's my purse? And then I start, I start panicking because I think, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen? The other day I... I was in my wallet in the car and I took out credit cards or something and they fell in between the seats and I started panicking because I'm thinking, where did they go? Oh my goodness. And I'm like, you know, that kind of thing. And the Lord's just like, I'm saying, 
Holy Spirit. And then I looked in between the seats and I couldn't see them. But I mean, they wouldn't have went anywhere, of course. But I was, I was starting to panic, thinking that, you know, I, I'm trying to switch over these credit cards. And, and, and the Lord just said, Sandra, just be still. And so I said, Holy Spirit, where are they? They're in between the seats. You know, and I do that with my purse and my keys all the time now. I, even my phone tonight, I'm looking through my purse, and ladies, don't you not enjoy having these big purses that have every, you know, you're going in there. But anyways, I said, Holy Spirit, where's my, my phone? And he started saying, Sandra, you left it at home plugged in. You know, it's so much easier when you, you know, have the, you know, the connection open there. And so I just want to encourage you in the midst of whatever's going on around you that it's so important just to say, you know, Holy Spirit, where is it? Rather than panicking or Holy Spirit, what is your perspective on the situation? Um, when I was looking in the Gospels in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know, the story of where Jesus was in the boat it's very interesting how each of the writers, they give a little perspective, a little bit different of, of, about the storm and Jesus in the bottom of the boat. Now, it was interesting because I was talking to Stephen about this and he said, you know, Sandra, when, you know, when Jesus was in the bottom of the boat, it was just a little boat. Now, I was thinking, oh, you know, like he's covered, he's in a nice bed, <laughs> there's a pillow. <laughs> He says, he's just in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> he's just laying there. And I, I thought, you know, the, these disciples, the storm sort of stirs up. And these disciples all of a sudden are panicking. And they're like, oh my goodness, the storm's coming up. And we went to Israel. And they were saying, and if I can remember what they said, um, when you, there's these hills. And what happens is the Mediterranean, I think, is on the other side of the hills. And the, the wind sort of comes through the, the hills. And then all of a sudden, the Sea of Galilee, it goes around. And it, and, the, and it goes around this way. And all of a sudden, the waves can just stir up all of a sudden. And it can happen quickly. And you know, when we were on the boat, we were on a boat in, in Galilee. And all of a sudden, just like that. The, the winds came. So I can only imagine when the disciples were on, the, on the, their little fishing boat, and it's a little fishing boat, and the storm comes up, and the water is swishing all over their face, how frantic they would have been. But I just want to just, I thought it was interesting. In Matthew, the disciples, their response was, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Now, if you were in that boat and water was coming over, you know, overboard, and Jesus is sleeping on the bottom of the boat, I, I think I can be honest and think that I was going to drown. Um, and then Jesus says, his response is, you have little faith. And then in Mark it says, teacher, don't you care if we drown? <laughs> you know, they're being honest. And, and, and then he goes, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And then in, in Luke it says, Master, 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 we are going to drown. And he says, where is your faith? And I, I know that sometimes in the midst of it, um, you know, when we're going through things, and we got, we'll go back to that Bible story, and, and you can just only imagine that this big storm, and they're thinking they're going to drown, and all the commotion that is going on, and Jesus gets up and he says, be still. And sometimes I do that. You know, um, recently we, at Christmas time, we went to the Dominican, and we went on a tour, and we went on these speedboats, and they were little speedboats. Now, I'm not a boat person, but I thought I'll be brave and get on the boat. And so there's four boats, and, and the funny part was, these guys were pre pretending to be James Bond. They were getting on the waves behind each other, like, and the boat was going boom, boom. You know, and I'm like, oh my goodness. And I am hanging on to Stephen, and the guy is just laughing. You know, because he thinks, you know, these, you know, here's this crazy woman. And now, I did not say anything. I'm not screaming. But inside, this is what I'm saying. God, thank goodness I have a life jacket. Because if I get thrown out of the boat, I won't drown. <laughs> and, you know, then I thought of the disciples. I bet you they didn't have life jackets. No. They wouldn't have had life jackets. But in the midst of it, I, I still felt secure. But there was something in me that just said, thank you, God, that I have, life ja I have a life jacket. So if we just happen to get thrown out, you know, we'll be fine. And I, and I was sort of at peace. But I know at the end of it, it was just 
that was all I could handle. <laughs> um, it was big enough for me. Boats and water um, are interesting for me, but anyways. But um, I think that the important part is that in, in life, and I just want to say, this isn't the whole sermon, but I'm, I'm, I just made it short. We have to be still. You have to be able to hear. And I, I was thinking about that today when I was sort of asking the Lord, well, if I was going to share something, and he said, tell them I want them to listen to me. And listening can be hard sometimes because sometimes, I just want to say that sometimes what goes on around us affects us. So the disciples, when they were in the boat and they were panicking and, oh my goodness, I'm going to drown, that can affect you, can it? If, if um, Lila jumped up and said, the roof is falling, the roof is falling, and, and I'm looking up and I don't see it, but she's panicking enough. Lila's sitting up front here. She's my good friend. You would all run out, wouldn't you? You know, and you would be, because you would respond to her fear. But, um, sorry, Lila, that was just a... But, you know, it's important that sometimes when you're looking at situations and when, when we get frantic and we're not being able to hear the vo voice of God because of what's going on around us, because of how people are reacting, it's just important to just say, okay, I need to step back. I need to take a breath. And I, I need to remember that God is in charge. And what is, what, how the people are responding right now is not what's the truth. Does that make sense? And oftentimes when we're frantic and we're, things are going on, it can affect us. Have you ever gone on, you should do a research on lack of sleep and stress and what it does to your body. It's incredible. I was reading that and I recently, when I went to the doctor, she um, said to me, well, Sandra, you look a little stressed. And I said, well, you yeah, know, just a little. You know, and then she said, um, you know, your cholesterol's a little high. She goes, you need to de-stress. Now, how do you tell a doctor? <laughs> you know, she's a great, she's a Christian lady. But she understands, you know, some of the responsibilities that we carry. But she says, you need to de-stress. De de and, you know, God has not created our body to be in that place. He's created our, our, our body to be at peace and to be at rest. And so I felt tonight, just to be able to, um, I just felt really just to minister to some of those situations. Um, I, I, one of the points that I, I thought was a really good one, but I just thought I would make it because it's very interesting. But how many of you, when, when stress is coming and people communicate, you sometimes get the facts wrong? Yeah? You know, like... There, there's like there's commotion going on and and there's things happening and so people's perspectives because it's their fear and their response and they communicate something but that actually isn't what's going on and I really felt like tonight you know that some of you there might be a situation where being still is hard right now and there's some facts and situations and words that are coming your way and they're not correct and, you know, you actually have to sit long enough and say, you know, okay, God, what do you want to do? And I did that this afternoon after, oh, it took me a couple hours, but better late than ever. <laughs> I have to be honest. I was like, oh, you know, kind of thing. But um, I, I said to the Lord, what do you want me to do with this situation? Because I could be, I could get right in there and yell. You know, I can yell. But I could get there and yell and just really go after a person for what they did. And God said to me, Sandra, let it go. And I'm like, okay. And actually, my headache went away. So that was really good. Do you know what I mean? So that's what stress and those kind of things and, and being like frantic does. And it's almost like we have to go, oh, okay, be still and know that I am God. And I love the, um, the, um, the rest of the verse when it says, I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted above the earth. Can you imagine when things are happening every time we could just say, oh God, you're so amazing in the midst of it. I want to encourage you tonight that when you leave this place that you just praise the Lord, that you, you exalt him above all the situation that's going on right now and you kind of step out of the situation and you just say, peace. 
I'm going to receive that peace. And, and, and just even ask the Lord, just picture Jesus standing on that boat in the middle of the storm and the, and the, um, the um, disciples, I can imagine them all wet and their hair just like in their face looking terrible and Jesus going, peace be still. Can you imagine the... <sighs> That's all I can describe it. That sense of um, the presence of God, that, that peace. Okay, so how about you stand up right now? We're going we're gonna to go to the ministry lines in a minute, but if you're feeling right now, how many people have been sort of struggling and you're in that, that place where stillness has not been your strength this week? Anybody? Just put your hand up if you feel... Okay, put your hand up really high. Okay. I want some people to go around those people right now. How about you surround them? Put your hand up really high and when somebody comes... And I want you to picture um, Jesus on your boat. And whatever, there's a man right here, David. There's a man right here. I want you to picture Jesus in the picture with you. You know, you almost have to invite him. Sometimes what happens is in the midst of the storm, we forget to invite him. We, for, we forget to acknowledge that he's actually there. Okay, there's a couple people at the back. So keep your hand if you're... And so Holy Spirit, I'm asking right now that you would just come in the situation that these people are dealing with right now. Father, I'm asking that you would get clear the facts up, first of all. Father, I'm asking that you would open their ears and their hearts to hear and to receive what you want to say to them right now. And even right now, you might want to say, Holy Spirit, what do I need to know about the situation right now? And just like today, when I asked the Lord and he said, just let it go, you just might have to do that and just feel his presence coming into that situation. And you know, the hard part about when you get stressed and things are coming and you have to deal with situations, you sometimes, you plan the conversation up in your head. You ever do that? Sometimes I do that. I, I, I start planning and I think, no, I can't do that. I just need to be at peace. I need to be at rest. And so, Father, I'm asking that you would just come and in your incredible love, Father, that you would come and lift the anxiety off of them right now. Father, just lift it off right now. Lord, I pray that you would just come and just be Lord over their emotions and their physical bodies right now. Father, where their physical body has been attacked because of the stuff that has been going on, Lord, I ask that you would just come. And Lord, we just want to say, God, be God. Be God in our lives. Be big in our lives. Be awesome in our lives. Just come and let him speak. And there's some of you tonight, I just want to encourage you. I, I really felt tonight, you know, just again to really encourage you to, to read the word, to, to declare his goodness. You know, you can Google when I'm feeling this, where does it talk about this in the Bible, even if you don't know where it is. You know, Google is amazing. There's Bible Gateway. There's all those places. There, the scripture is full of answers. And one of the things that the scriptures talks about is it talks about the love of Jesus. It talks about how Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. And because of that love, can you imagine, God said, I'm going to send my only son Jesus to die on the cross. And he's going to take the weight of the anxiety, of the sin, of the disease, of the people then and the people in the future. And every nail that was hit on the cross that went through Jesus' um, um, hands and his feet was for you and for me. And there may be some of you tonight that, that need to give your life to Jesus. You know, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. And I want to tell you that it is the greatest thing that you could do to give your life to Jesus. To say, Jesus, I need you. I need a savior. I need I need my sins forgiven. I need to know that when I die, when I leave this place, that I'm going to go to heaven. You know, the greatest thing about, I was sharing about Bill and Mary Audrey. 
is that when his time comes, he's going to go to heaven. And so that's the joy of knowing Jesus. And so if that is you, if you have never given your life to Jesus, I want to encourage you to come to the front, and I'm going to say a prayer with you. And if, the, if you're standing by somebody, you may just ask them, do you need to go to the front? Do you need, do you need to give your life to Jesus? We're going to sing a song of worship right now, but I want to encourage you that we want to pray for everybody again. And so if you would like prayer, um, if you could just go underneath the flags and stand on the green lines and make your way over, over there, and that would be great. I want to bless you, and I want to bless those that, that have been watching on the inter Internet tonight. Father, I thank you for them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just come and minister to them right now. Father, above all else, would you be Lord over their lives, Father? Would you come and just pour in your love into them right now in the name of Jesus? And Father, would you bless them in an incredible way in the name of Jesus? Amen. Okay. So I bless you, those that are here right now. The ministry team is just going to come to the front here. And they're going to, um, if there are a few people that can be catchers for them as they're praying for you, that would be wonderful. But if you would like more prayer, and just to remind you that the receipts for 2011 are, yeah, 11 are over at the side if you haven't got them yet. And God bless you.